Imagine a force so pervasive, so universally experienced that it infiltrates every area of our lives and yet we've normalized it. It's just a normal part of who we are. Well, let me paint the picture like this. Do you remember when we were kids and we were told not to do something and it actually made us want to do it more? Maybe it was hiding away candy or that bedtime rebellion where your parents told you you need to go to bed, but you didn't. Or you did the wrong thing in school, said the wrong thing in school, you hurt that person, you thought the wrong thought, you actually felt bad, but you kept doing it over and over and over again. And now, even as an adult, it's hard for you to break that cycle. My name is Eddie Ruiz, and I exist to help you sharpen your biblical mindsets to love God and love others well. And I'm so glad you stopped by because we really got to talk about two specific words and the first word will stop you from having a relationship with Jesus and the second word will launch you into a relationship with Jesus. In the same way we talked about what we weren't supposed to do as kids and as innocent and as lighthearted as that actually sounds, I feel like those things conditioned us to do what we do as adults but now the habits are harder to break, the cycles are harder to break, and the stakes are a lot much higher when we do what we're not supposed to do. Have you ever said something? or done something or thought something that literally made you lose sleep? If the answer is no, then you're completely lying. But if your answer is yes, then you really understand that it's very possible to do the wrong thing and yet repeat the behavior over and over and over. Say the hurtful words or do the things out of anger that you know you shouldn't be doing or even think the thoughts out of lust, pride, or jealousy and still justify them because you're putting your feelings over your actions. Does that sound familiar? This is the word that we call remorse. In the Greek, the Bible calls it meta melomai, which means to regret or to be sorry and repent to oneself. And that's it. Literally, you just feel bad. And the best biblical example of this word is found in Matthew chapter 27 verse 3 where Judas, after handing Jesus over for 30 pieces of silver, he sees his accusers coming to condemn him to the cross. It says this, Then when Judas, his betrayer, saw that Jesus was condemned, he changed his mind and brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders. Judas felt bad. He had sorrow. It was purely an emotional response, but it didn't actually change his heart. In fact, we see that when he felt bad, what did he do? He didn't go to Jesus for forgiveness. He went back to the chief priests and the elders that he took the money from. He simply had buyer's remorse. He was remorseful and felt bad for what he'd done, but it didn't actually transform his heart. You see, remorse doesn't actually change desires. Metamelomai doesn't change the posture of your heart. It actually lacks all integrity. Feeling bad doesn't do anything for us. If anything, it literally ignores that what we've done, said, or thought is even sin at all. Remorse at the end of the day won't save you, it won't save me, and it absolutely didn't save Judas. Because metamelomai, or remorse, is rooted really in the futility of our thinking in our mind and not in the posture of our heart, which at the end of the day separates us from God completely because everything becomes about us and the way we feel and the way that we're pondering on things and not about God. And just as a side note for today's application is remorse doesn't actually look for forgiveness in places that can actually give it. It looks for forgiveness in dead places, but we never find it. So by the example of Judas alone in the Bible, we see that it's completely possible to walk with Jesus and have our hearts hardened towards him, which honestly is pretty terrifying. And in today's context, where morality seems to be a shifting target, we understand that a lot of times we let our feelings become our masters, and it honestly highlights that we're just not supposed to be like this. So what can we actually do to make sure that our relationship with Jesus is true, that it's real, that we're in alignment with him in everything that we do? Well, that's where our second word comes in, repent. In the Greek, the Bible calls it metanoeo, and it means to change one's mind for better, hardly to amend with abhorrence of one's past sins. In other words, we don't just feel bad, we actually 
hate the sin behind the feeling. In the New Testament specifically, this word metanoeo appears 33 to 36 times, which obviously means that it was important for believers to get handles and grasp and understand it. Jesus himself uses this word in the gospels quite a bit when referring to the kingdom of God and our responsibility to respond to it. Specifically in Luke 15, he says this, just so I tell you, there is joy before the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Then Peter in one of his sermons in Acts chapter three follows up with this, repent therefore and turn back that your sins may be blotted out. So clearly there's a theme here. Repentance has something to do with our sin. Jesus says, repent, the kingdom is near. Peter says, repent and be baptized for the forgiveness of your sins, for your sins to be blotted out. So repentance in this context isn't just a mere feeling of sorrow, it's an active turning away from sin, a proactive turning away from sin and facing God. So repentance in this context is therefore a posture towards God that leads to salvation in Jesus. It's not just a feeling of sadness or sorrow, it's literally a proactive stance against sin. We go to war with sin. We decide to seek it, kill it, and destroy it in our lives. And Paul so beautifully compares these two words that live in like an eternal state of tension, metamelomai and metanoeo in Corinthians chapter seven. He says, for godly grief produces a repentance that leads to salvation without regret, whereas worldly grief produces death. You see, from that verse alone, we can recognize that remorse or metamelomai is rooted in the mind, but repentance or metanoeo is rooted in the spirit. One is temporary, one is eternal. And like I've said it before, Jesus is so much more concerned about your eternal state than your temporary emotional disposition. So now that we have this understanding that these two words live in eternal tension, remorse and repentance, metamelomai, how do we apply this to our life? Here's the biblical truth. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So listen, true repentance, true heart change and transformation starts at the feet of Jesus because now we become fully aware that we cannot fight sin alone, that we have life in Jesus because of his death and his resurrection and through his Holy Spirit that he sent us, we have the tools to fight sin and evil in our lives, to not just merely feel bad anymore, but to actually go to war with sin. But we have to make the daily decision to pick up our cross and follow Jesus, honestly, no matter how hard it may be, because it's going to cost us a lot. Jesus did not promise us that this was going to be easy. He did not promise us that we were going to have a good time while we kill sin in our lives. It's a process that hurts. But as we're being conformed into the image of Jesus through the Holy Spirit, chiseling away the areas of our life that are not fruitful and they're fully sinful, we're going to be in pain. But it's pain that's worth it because eternity is on the other side. And that opportunity for eternity is literally one life decision away. You don't have to clean yourself up. You don't have to go reconcile with everybody in order to be saved today. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. Repentance leads to salvation and salvation leads to life. So let's stop feeling so bad for ourselves and stop repeating the behaviors that are causing us so much strife in our lives. And let's just start repenting. Metamelomai versus metanoeo. Remorse versus repentance. Choose life and not death. And remember friends, keep it biblical. And I'll see you in the next one.